Welcome in to the TGI Friday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for being here with us. We're going to leave you with a little something fun for today or for the weekend here. We set up the next several days yesterday and even looked over the hill into September and October. We don't have anything in the sky today except the lunar change that we mentioned yesterday. The moon goes into Aries at 925 this morning, Eastern Time. I love pulling out my files from the Steve Forrest audiobooks that I narrated for him. I just love his writing style, his wit, and especially his wisdom. The last book we did is called The Endless Sky, and it's an accumulation of like 70-something articles that Steve had published over the last 20 years that during COVID he sat down and compiled into a book. Thusly, a lot of the articles are dated, obviously. So, for instance, he talks about in 2016, there's an article in there about when the saints go marching in. And he talks about the kids being born since 2011 and 12 under Neptune and Pisces and how they're spiritually attuned. Well, you can still get a lot of great information out of that article. Another one, the one we're going to listen to now, is from Chapter 5. It goes back to 2014, when Saturn and Mars were both going into retrograde at the same time. But just like the article about the saints coming in, this one too holds some wonderful keys and nuggets of information that we can glean nearly 10 years later. That whole series of Steve Forrest books is available on Audible and on iTunes, which is now Apple Books. You don't need a subscription for either. And I do get a percentage of the sale, so it does help support the podcast. Thank you so much in advance. I'm not going to do a closing. We'll just leave you with the audiobook. Enjoy. I'll see you back tomorrow with Ray Merriman. Chapter 5 Continuing with our theme of rehabilitating some of astrology's allegedly criminal elements, here we take on the two so-called malefics, Saturn and Mars in their fiercest modes of expression, when they are making stations. Again, our theme is not that everything is automatically wonderful. Rather, it is an affirmation that everything in astrology can potentially serve the evolving soul. Everything can potentially be gotten right, in other words. Nothing astrological happens simply to annoy you or make a mess of your life. As you listen, you might recall that the Crimean crisis occurred right on schedule. Russia invaded Ukrainian territory and the world was pushed to the brink of war. From the March 2014 newsletter, Stationary, quote-unquote, Malefics. The beginning of March brings us an unusual patch of astrological weather. Both of the so-called malefic planets, Mars and Saturn, make stations and turn retrograde pretty much simultaneously. Mars does so on the first of the month, near the end of Libra. Saturn follows just about 24 hours later while in the latter part of Scorpio. Mars will remain retrograde in Libra until May 19th, then Saturn turns direct a few weeks later on July 20th still in Scorpio. When a planet is stationary, its energy is simply more pronounced. Everyone feels it more strongly. A really reliable way to see this effect in action is to observe your own experience with Jupiter. When it is moving fast and it breezes through what might seem like an important conjunction in your chart, you might feel like asking your astrologer for your money back. Where was that promised good luck? You didn't hit the Powerball after all. But if Jupiter makes a station on the same sensitive point, start picking out extra features for your new Lamborghini. In astrology, slow is powerful, and stopped is as slow as slow can get. By the way, Jupiter will also make a station during the first week in March, turning direct on the 6th, about a third of the way, into Cancer. If your birthday is near the end of June or early July, better head to that car dealership. 
Bottom line for all of us, that first week of March packs a real astrological punch. It's unusual for three planets to make stations within a period of less than a week. We might add Mercury making a station and turning direct on the 28th of February, but we'll not be concerned with that here. All in all, we are looking at a period in which a great many things are coming to a head, both globally and personally. That's the nature of these planetary stations. The rubber meets the road. Inner energy and outward circumstances connect and ignite. Let's start by thinking about Mars and Saturn and their problematic designations as malefics. There's really nothing inherently unlucky about either planet, or for that matter, any planet. Mars can represent courage and appropriate assertiveness, while Saturn is about self-discipline and integrity. With Mars, if you are brave, the planet is your ally. Is there a situation in your life in which you really need to speak up and to make your needs and views felt? If so, you'd better do it near the beginning of the month. That's because wimpier responses to a Mars station generally leave us victimized and injured. Just be careful not to get up on your high horse. Mars can bring self-righteousness, excessive passion, and the use of too much force into a situation. In any case, the call to find that martial middle path will be strong during the first part of the month. The laws of synchronicity declare that whatever Mars situations you are facing are reaching critical mass then. Meanwhile, Saturn calls for strength too, but of a different kind. Sometimes it asks us to simply endure some suffering for the sake of a principle. An example might be when you have a friend who is seriously ill and needs your help and support. You may be tired and overextended, but you visit her in the hospital anyway. The lazy alternative of blowing her off and staying home involves such a loss of self-respect and dignity that it's not worth any ease that it might bring. Still, you need to be wary of Saturn. Whose values are you living out? Your own? Or do they come from some bogus sense of right and wrong that originated in someone manipulating you with shame? Saturn can depress and exhaust us when we are reading our moral lines from someone else's script. What about the combination of these two planetary stations? The whole, as usual, is not only greater than, but also different from the sum of the parts. It takes real courage to endure. It takes courage to make a stand. Sometimes it takes great moral strength simply to keep your mouth shut when you are tempted to wreak havoc on the souls of others because you are so angry at them. This is what it feels like when both Saturn and Mars pulse together this way. At best, Saturn gives moral values and direction to that fiery martial energy, while Mars charges up Saturn and gives it the ability to blast through a wall of previous limitations. Such a Mars-Saturn period is a time for the use of measured force. Reach for realistic targets and avoid interpersonal scorched earth policies. But don't be a doormat unless you want to get accustomed to the role. Now let's add Jupiter to the mix, since it will be stationing around the same time. Classically, Jupiter is the greater benefic. But during a Jupiter time, be careful for what you ask for, because you're likely to get it. If Jupiter is stationing near a sensitive spot in your chart, doors are likely to open for you. Your task is to recognize the right opportunities and to avoid all that which is glitter but is not truly gold. How do you tell the difference? 
Having Mars and Saturn in play at the same time helps to clarify that question in a specific way. They add a new element to the mix. As we just saw, they both like challenges. These two planets actually enjoy some difficulty. Jupiter isn't like that, but when it is in partnership with the other two, the total picture becomes a synthesis of all three. I am envisioning the sweetest apple near the top of the tree. How badly do you want it? The apple is there, but to get it, you have to do some climbing. The laws of synchronicity declare that such opportunities will be presenting themselves to you in early March, especially if you have sensitivities to the sign and degree position these three planets currently occupy. Meanwhile, the law of impermanence suggests that these opportunities will not remain available for long. The stars are aligned for ambitious moves requiring effort, moves that take courage, and moves that will give you a sense of pride and dignity as you look back upon them. And looking back is the spirit of the retrograde periods that begin in early March. Mars will remain retrograde until May 19th, while Saturn turns direct later on July 20th. You will have that period to digest and integrate the fruits of your strong response to those energies or to reflect upon the price of fear and hesitation. Meanwhile, Jupiter makes its station and turns direct on the 6th, suggesting expanding horizons, the fruit of the decisiveness, audacity, and clarity you mustered at this critical crossroads.